yesterday I did a live stream. I want to pick up from there. Was it yesterday or there before yesterday? I want to pick up from there. Um, I want to say one or two things that are responsible to why partners fight, whether you're married, you're courting, or you're dating. A, lo a couple of things are responsible for why we keep fighting. Now, uh, to fight is part of a healthy sign for every relationship. I know you may want to disagree with me. If you are in a relationship where, okay, you fight sometimes with your partner, you argue, you do a lot of all those things. It's a sign of a healthy relationship. Now, a relationship where you are, you there's no argument, there is nothing, there is no time that um, you have to discuss about your differences. Something is not definitely right. No matter how perfect you think your partner is, they will get it will get to a point whereby your interests, your interests will clash in your relationship. Now, you may see me and my husband holding hand with each other, Romeo, Juliet, or probably other friends, and you feel that their relationships are perfect. Look at them. We, we are always fighting. Mm -mm. Mm -mm. There is no perfect relationship. It's just that people manage their conflicts differently. So your ability to be able to manage the differences you have with your partner is what makes your marriage or your relationship very, very fantastic. So don't try to compare your partner with other people thinking that they are doing it so perfectly. It's just your own that is being frustrating. Your partner is frustrating you. Mm -mm. It is compulsory, I said earlier, for you to get to a point whereby your interests will clash. But one thing that is not healthy is that when you fight with your partner in, in your relationship is constant if you do a ratio of your fight period and your peaceful period if your fight period is extremely higher than the period of peace in your relationship then you may need to seek for help now it doesn't mean that your partner is too too bad for you it doesn't mean that you are also not compatible it may just mean that you need help to be able to manage your differences as people coming from two different backgrounds and your ability to be able to blend them. Uh, you see, things will go wrong at times. Things will go like they won't work. You don't just pick it up and trash it. Look at it. Why are things going this way? What am I supposed to do? Now, if you have exhausted all the tactics or wisdom or intelligence that you know how to use, and still things are not flowing the way they should be, you simply need someone to help you, to give you a piece of advice. And I said last, the last time, don't seek for counsel from people who has the ability to take side with you. Rather, seek for help from the people who will tell you the truth and help you to overcome your conflict in your relationship. That is a wise way to seek help if you are going through challenges in your relationship. Again, um, a fight is not a sign that things are not working. It may be a healthy sign that you just need to improve on certain things and build the relationship to become a better person. But now listen to this. Don't make some mistakes. No matter how intelligent you are, don't be a person in a relationship who will take hold of a stand and say, no, my, my own suggestion is the best and we are not going to change it. We have to stick to what I'm saying. Even when you are the head as the man, you don't run a relationship like that. You don't manage a marriage like that. It, is, it can never be you, only you, that has the best idea. If only you can sustain your relationship, you shouldn't be in a relationship. If only you can run the journey of life, you don't need a partner. Just stay alone and keep going. But the moment you decide that you need a partner, it means you need someone that you will rub minds together in the journey of life. You need someone that will help you when you are weak. You need someone that will give you cancer when you are exhausted. You need someone, you know, to love. You need someone to caress. You need someone to embrace. So the moment you say, now only you, Sabi, then that relationship will not work. You can, you may be the head, even as the head. You shouldn't be, you know, the only one that will, that will have all the piece of advice. Listen to each other.
Look at issues from different perspectives. The training you have right now that's giving you the audacity that your intelligence is the best is one way of looking at issues. Your partner is coming from a background, which is another way of looking at the same issue. The combination of these two intelligence will give, give you a very good relationship. So don't disregard your partner when it comes to making decisions about your relationship. You will really need to take note of this. I've met people who tell me I'm very I'm intelligent. The way he thinks is just like his local. No. Even when your partner doesn't have education, it's not all the time that the conventional education is a sign of intelligence. You need to listen up to each other. Don't be insistent that do it my own way or we're not making a progress. You're, you're going to scatter your relationship. Give room for each other. Rub minds together. Rub ideas together. And grow your family. And grow your relationship. Another mistake you must not make is don't go outside, listen to counsel, and coming home to impose it on your partner. That's a very bad way to handle your relationship. Again, let me repeat that. You have friends who feel that, uh, okay, they have exposure, you're on the same level, but your partner is lower, therefore um, you go out there, seek for their cancer. They tell you, this is how I deal with my partner. And you take hold of their cancer, you come home wanting to imp implement it. It doesn't work that way. The reason why it will never work that way is that your partner is not their own partner. See the peculiarity of each other and blend together based on this peculiarity. Be teachable, whether you are the man as the head of the family or you are the woman as the helper. Be teachable. Blend your effort together. Two good heads are better than one. The reason why you want to start a relationship is for support, is for help, is for love. You can't do it alone. So calm down. Now, another temptation a lot of us fall into that makes our relationship to be so battled on every side is um, our, the relationship we have with our own families, our siblings, okay? Now, if I am a wife that, is, that was very close to my dad, uh, or I've seen my parents' marriage, marriage so nice and all those things, coming to my own home and wanting my husband to be like my dad, it's not going to happen that way. What in my brothers, who I, I believe are very lovely, very sweet, they take good care of me, they, you know, they pamper me. Now I'm in, my, in the arms of my husband. I want my, husband's, I want my husband to be like my brothers. It's not going to work. <laughs> it's not going to work. And never get to that point. We are doing your uh, differences you now begin to compare your partner with someone you feel that is doing it better. You break down the self-esteem of your partner by doing so. Most times when we fight, we don't fight the right way. Most of the time when we fight, we damage a lot of things. And by the time we come back to reconcile, what we damage, we take more years of time to repair. Feel free to disagree. Feel free to say, no, I don't want it that way. Feel free to argue with each other. But in the midst of the conflict, in the midst of the argument, respect each other. So that after the fight, you won't spend the rest of the month of the year trying to bind the wound you have created with your words or your attitude. So be coming down <laughs> during conflict. So again, it's not abnormal to have a fight. Just manage your fight so well. I see someone that is uh, asking to join the video. Sure, I'll, I'll, I'll add you. Oh, yeah, me, I, you're only I hope you're available. I hope you have a contribution to, to make. Okay, I, I guess. Uh, all right. So if you are willing to, it's not a problem. I, I see someone that is asking to join. All right, so... I see someone is trying to join. Yeah, I'm trying to add you. If you are available, just 
just be a part of it. So that is just a brief thing I wanted to discuss with you about managing your conflict. So again, it's healthy to have a fight, but it is unhealthy for the fight to linger for too long and for you to insist that this is just the way you do it. All right. So may the Lord take good care of you. All right. So the guest declined. Okay. I saw that you invited. That was why I tried to add you to it. So, Lord. so I hope you were able to pick one or two things from this. And I pray that the good Lord will take good care of you. Uh, again, uh, lastly, before I'll see you tomorrow, I hope I'll be able to come up tomorrow. Um, adopt, learn to be grateful. Adopt gratitude in your relationship. When it looks like it's my husband's responsibility to take care of me, take me out, you know, pamper me, and then it's my responsibility to take care of the family, cook, and all those things. You see, um, in a healthy relationship, you don't say, this is it, this is it. Blend together, do it together, relate. Make it a relationship indeed. It will be so sweet. Sometimes when I get home late, before coming home, my husband will have cooked. Honestly, I'm not saying you should impose this on your husband. But it's a relationship. Let's do it together. Let's do it together. Sometimes I'll come home, my husband is right there washing the dishes. Okay, it doesn't stop him from being the head. It, it, it just, I just feel honored to be blessed by such a person. So don't sit rest by waiting for your tired husband to come back and do something you feel that he should be the one to do it. Or your tired wife, you know, waiting for her to come back to say, you should be the one to do it. Be friends and everything is going to be fine. Okay? If there's no question for me, I'm going to be leaving you and I pray that the good Lord will take good care of you. Uh, I see good morning, man. Will this life be, let me see, be saved or posted on Facebook? Yeah, 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 yeah. I'll save it and then post it. The last time was an error. So another person is saying, thanks for this. God bless you real good in Jesus' name. I have a question. Yes, you can post your question. I hope, um, I hope you can still hear me. As long as you can still hear me, please feel free to post your question. And if you can't hear me and you see me talking, please, you let me know because I know that my microphone is telling me that my battery is low. I don't know, maybe it's still working. Post your question, I'll be able to attend to it. And if I don't attend to it while we are live, post it, uh, I will respond to it. The, the video will be live. So take care of your partner, take care of yourself, take care of your babies, you know. Um, again, I was talking about uh, adopt gratitude incentive, okay? Thank you. Uh, oh, you, you cooked. Thank you. So don't say, you, some of us will hold back our thank you because we feel it's your responsibility. You don't build a good relationship like that. Okay? Just be nice. A lot of us are nice to the people outside. Be nice to the one in your house. Charity begins at home. Okay? Um, someone is asking, what do you do when your partner doesn't admire or commend you when you look, but an outside does? An outsider does. This gets at one really high. Yeah, it could be so, so tough when your partner doesn't admire you and you feel, ah, I'm looking my best. And then you get outside and one, two, three people that see it, they say, wow, you, you're cute. Now, I don't want you to be offended. Honestly, don't be offended. Uh, Sometimes what we do wrongly to our partners are not deliberate. I don't know your husband, so I don't know your partner. I don't know if this is you or another person, but honestly, I'm not rooting for anybody. I'm just speaking from my line of expertise and from experience. Okay. Um, sometimes people are not on nice intentionally. I said earlier that our background is what informs who we are, even in our marriages. Uh, if I come from a home where every little thing they say thank you, every little thing they say thank you, and another person is coming from a home whereby after going an extra mile to do something, you say, put it there, and that's all. You even scream at me. There is tendency that that person will carry that same attitude over into his or her marriage. And that is when the partner begins to feel the fire. So what I would suggest you do is that 
if you need help, professional counselor, ask for it. But create time to always talk about what is paining you. Let me use that English. Whatever you don't feel cool about in your relationship, learn to call each other to order. Now, your approach, your manner of approach of presenting what displeases you matters also. You spend a couple of time with your partner. You know how your partner, you know, uh, feels or reacts to the way you present things. Then blend a little bit, shift your ground a little bit and present your displeasure in a more presentable way so that you can create room for conversation. A lot of us don't talk. We just feel bad and we feel, okay, I don't want to create a problem. I don't want him to be annoyed again. You keep quiet and you feel, no, it's not healthy for you. Talk about those things. And don't talk about what you don't like by creating another fight. Sweetheart, can we talk? It's time for bed, but um, can we talk? You said something yesterday and uh, I don't really feel good about it and all those things. And if it is you that your partner calls to say, I don't like this, whether you accept it or not, first of all, say, I'm sorry. Then you explain. When you are explaining, don't try to still justify you being wrong. Again, perspectives are different because we are coming from two different families. Let's give room for these differences sincerely. By doing so, we'll build the best marriages around if you are patient with each other and understand perspectives in these relationships. I hope I'm able to answer that your question. Again, don't be offended. He or she may not know, honestly. You will say, come on, see. you don't even know. Mm -mm. It doesn't work like that. All right. Um, I don't know if there are any more questions. If you are willing to be a part of the, you want me to add it to this video so that uh, you can make your contribution, please just, there should be something you press there um, that we, you know, that will make me add you from here. Okay. Malalu Adeola. Yes. Thanks so much. All right. God bless you, darling. All right. So I think that is all I have for you today. I don't want to uh, take so much of your time. If there are no more questions, again, take good care of yourself. Uh, when next are you doing life? I'm not so sure. <laughs> My hands are full. So, but once I have the time, I want I quickly do it. I'll, I'll keep coming up just shortly this way. And whatever you are able to grasp from anytime you see me online, just pick it up, okay? This time around, my schedules are so, 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 so rough. I can't say this is it, all right? So um, just bear with me. Everything's going to be fine. I love you all, and I'll pray with you before you go. Again, take good care of yourself, your family. Put your family first before any other thing. Uh, that's after God, um, and then you'll be good to go. Let me pray with you. Father, I thank you for this lovely and sweet people. As they enter into the weekend, Lord, take good care of them. Some of them, they depend on you for provision, provide for them. I pray the wisdom to live together and build a great home, O oh Lord, let it be impacted unto them. I cover you with the blood of Jesus. In Jesus' name we pray. Enjoy your weekend and uh, I'll be seeing you some other time. Love you all and bye-bye.